Hi guys, I just wanted to say a quick few notes. Um, the version that I've just played is an amalgamation of a couple of the recorded versions I've heard of Jimmy's and some of the live versions. The thing with Jimmy is when he would play this live it would always be a little bit different and even the two official recordings that I've found that there's differences in the melody and the diff little differences in the rhythm so I can't sit here and say that's the right way to play it and that's the wrong way to play it. There's definitely a template of main ingredients like the chord progression that he used, but he would improvise and play the different parts and the solo would be very different. And I think that was the whole point, is to just have a general template and then every night he'd perform it, he'd put himself into it and do some improvisation. So what I've just played is a version that, if I was going to get up in a band tonight and play it, that would be how I would approach it, which is a bit of a mixture of a couple of different versions of Jimmy's and I put a bit of myself in there. Um, so that's that's kind of the way I'd approach it, and I think, in the spirit of Hendrix, that's maybe the way you should approach it too. Uh, just for reference, I also used the uni vibe on the guitar, kind of sounded a bit. It's got that kind of movement underneath the chords going on, just because Jimmy was known for using a lot of different effects, and he would just put them on whenever he uh, he felt like it. So I just thought. And again, in the spirit of Hendrix, I put a bit of a swirly psychedelic effect in there just for a bit of fun. Anyway, have a go and um, stick around for the tutorial. I've just gone through the rhythm parts, the melody, the chord progression. Um, if anybody wants me to do a transcription or, or a tutorial on the solo that I played, kind of putting me in there as well, then let me know and I'll do a few uh, full tutorial on that as well. But also try and have a improvise, try and put yourself in there as well in, in the spirit of Jimmy, do some improvisation and see what comes out. Okay guys, I'm just gonna launch into tutorial now. I'm not gonna talk about any of the theory stuff. I'll leave that to a one to one lessons. I'm literally just gonna show you what it is I played in the performance. Okay, so first things first, we're down here on the low E on fret six, which is the B flat. And we're going to be moving between the octave, which is placed on the D string, down on the A fret. And this is what we're going to want to sound like. Okay, the, the most important part about this is that you, you mute the strings after you play the note. What you don't want is the notes to bleed into each other like this. So how I'm achieving that is when I strike the, the B flat and the low E here, I'm releasing it 
but keeping my finger on the string or which is called left hand muting so play release and it deadens the sound I'm doing the same on the third finger okay and then my palm is keeping is relaxed on the G B and E string so I'm basically muting the strings that I'm not playing and then you play this four times the bass player is playing the E so you've got the tritone we'll let the bass player take care of that okay then we're going to launch into this melody so as I mentioned on um, just before we started here Hendrix played this very differently um, I'm just going to do an amalgamation of the recorded version some of the live stuff and a bit of me in there as well okay so we're going to start off with this slide sliding from so we're going to go on D string we're going to slide from 7 to 9 then I'm going to grab the G string here on fret 7 then I'm going to grab the B string on fret 8 and then I'm going to push it slight push up more of a microtonal thing and go back to the D string on fret 7 so that, that short phrase I'll play it for you slowly nice and slowly it's important that you get that push on the pitch okay it really does add character to it Okay, moving on, then we're going to slide from the D on fret 3 to fret 5, to the open D, so, so far, and I'm going to play with the low E, grab the A string on fret 5 and slide up to fret 7 to the octave. So nice and slowly, let me play that again. those two phrases together we've got this slowly just for a performance note I'm adding slides in there so I go like this I can hear some of that sometimes on the recorded version you don't have to do that but I just put it in just for a bit of decoration okay so you play that those two phrases twice so we've got this Okay, from here, well, we've just finished, slide back, go back to 5 and then slide back up again to the 7. Then we're going to grab the D here on fret 5. D, sorry, a D on fret 7. Then we do this bend, which is very important. Slide down, down, up and then back to the D on fret 5 so so far we then hit the D again we're going to hit open A open E grab the low E on the 3rd fret let's put some nice vibrato on there I kind of exaggerated a little bit on the performance but I like the way it sounds ok moving on then we're going to hit the open A going to slide from the 5 to the 7 again on the A, grab the D on the 5th fret and then this time we're going to fret the D on the 5th, 5th 7th fret and then bend straight so it's so far we and then follow that up with a hammer on from 5 to 7 so we got this so far back to 5th fret on the D then we hit the open D again and we're going to grab the final phrase we're going to grab 7 to 9 grab the G on fret 7 hit that twice and then hammer on to fret 9 so let me just play that last phrase slowly so we'll go from here okay so that's the introduction all right guys so now we're going to go on to the verse so after we've played this um, I'm going to slide around about the 15 17 fret it doesn't really matter there's no real musical value to this it's just more like a nuance or a decoration and I'm going to 
hit the open E, and then you're going to start the verse progression with the infamous Hendrix chord. Although it's called a Hendrix chord, of course this chord existed long before Jimi Hendrix played it, but he does get a, deserve a lot of credit for putting it into pop and rock at the time, especially using distortion. It's an altered dominant chord, in this case E7 sharp 9. So I'll just bring this out in case you'll just describe this in case you haven't done it before. Middle finger on the A string, fret 7, or E note or root. Index finger grabbing the D string on fret 6. Third finger grabbing the G string on fret 7. And little finger grabbing the B string on fret 8. And again, we've got this sound, let me play it. It's okay if you hit the two E strings when it's here because it's an E7 sharp 9. It's a movable shape, so you can move it around the fretboard, and this note dictates what the chord is. So, if I was up here in the third fret, we know from our open chords this would be C, so it would be C7 sharp 9. So, it's quite a useful one to do. Jimmy would use this frequently as well. So, I'm going to go open E7. So. As I mentioned before, Jimmy would mess about with the rhythm, it would change a lot. So, this is just what I played in the performance. I'm going to put a bit of me in there. Now we go to a G major. Now I'm playing it like this, borrowing the E and B, grabbing the fretting the G on the fourth fret, and my third finger grabbing the D. Jimmy would wrap his thumb over the top and grab the bass note. He didn't always hit that, but that's the way he would play it. The, the A would be sometimes open and not dependent. I just focus more on playing the bottom four strings, the D, G, B, and E. But that's the way Jimmy would play it, and you can quite clearly see him play that on many of the performances that you can find on YouTube. Slide up, slide the same sh shape up, and we've got an A major. So, so far we've got this. What I was doing just before I start the progression again is I was adding this little hammer on and pull off. So I play that slowly. It's a typical Hendrix trick. And again, when Jimmy was playing it, he would maybe do it. Be playing all kinds of little fiddly bits in there, but I just decided to stick up this one. So let me just play it slowly for you. the verse progression I believe it's played five times in the first verse and then it's played four times in the second verse okay so on to the kind of chorus part which is we've got these octaves so let me show you what goes on there we're grabbing uh, a shape octaves in this case E so my index finger is down here on the A string on fret 7 my third finger is on the G string on fret 9 now I'm keeping the A string muted by the flesh underneath my index finger. So I'm hitting these three strings, but only two of them are ringing out. Okay, so it's kind of a left hand mute. But just using, you probably find that when you hold it, your finger will naturally do that anyway. Um, and then what I'm doing then is sliding up, going back a tone. So I'm sliding up a tone to the F sharp. Back, back to the E, and then back a tone to D, so it's like this. Okay. Then we go into what is essentially the first phrase of the introduction melody. So nothing new to learn there, you just play that twice. You don't end up on the D, so you slide up five to se uh, 7 to 9, grab the G on the 7, and then do your sort of microtonal push there and that phrase is played twice so we got this and then we're back to play the open E and then we start the verse progression again Let's play it four times okay Okay guys, so this next section is kind of like the pre-solo section. Um, so what happens here is after we've done repeat the, the, the stops and the octaves again, after we've played the verse progression four times, we do this. And we start from... So we go. So I'm going to 
going to slide from um, you could slide from the nine, but I'm just going to slide from the from slide from the ten up to the twelve. Grab grab the uh, twelfth fret with the D. Put your index finger on the G here to grab the next note on the ninth fret. And I'm going to grab the B on the twelfth fret and just give it uh, give it a full uh, tone bend. Be quite aggressive with the vibrato on that. And I'm going to slide up from uh, 12 to 14 on the D. Okay, again 12 and then 12 on the G. So 12, 14, slide, 12 on the G. Okay, what I do here, some people, and Jimmy again changed, I'm going to use my little finger to grab the high E on the 15th fret. And I kind of trail it off. Some people go and add some vibrato. I kind of like the way it trails off, just to add something different. So I go. Okay, we're then going to go into grab the 14th fret on the G. We're going to bend it. So I'm just going to. So grab 14, push up. Use my little finger to grab the B on the 15th fret. Okay, so let me just play that slowly. This is the whole pre chorus. So from the octaves and the second verse. This then takes us into the solo. So you play this twice, this phrase twice, this phrase twice, and then you go. And this then starts the solo. Okay guys, I just thought I'd go over, as I know some of you guys will ask me, what kind of effect I had on the guitar when I was playing through the track. So, what I had here is my Univibe, so, these are the settings that I used when I played through the performance of the, the Deep, the Jimi Hendrix, the Purple Hay song. So without the guitar, just a clean sound, which I, I've got a Roland Cube and I've just got a touch of delay from the amp itself. <laughs> So these are the settings I used. For the gain, I used my Super Overdrive W on the custom mode, and these are the settings that I used. Um, again, I'll just give you the clean signal. And here's the gain. So this is just going straight to guitar, pedal, pedal to amp, and that's it, nothing in between. I did that is because I just wanted to make it sound a little bit more psychedelic because Hendrix is known for just kicking on effects whenever he felt like it so I just thought oh, just in the spirit I'll put I'll just put a univibe on it this isn't a real univibe it's like a digital recreation of it and um, arguably of course the original one sounded better because they had a valve in them but this gets the job done and uh, I bought it because I didn't realize how or know how much I was going to use a univibe so Turns out I really like him and I think I'll get a, um, the, one of the expensive ones. They do sound a little better. However, this does get the job done. And if you don't want to spend the fortune on it, I definitely recommend it. I'll just run through a couple more of the settings. So. <laughs> So 
So as you can see, you've got a speed, which I'll try now. So you can go from really subtle, and it's just got that, that movement on the, in, within the chord. A kind of swell, you can hear it. And then you can have something a lot more extreme. Even, you don't even have to go to about 12 o'clock. <laughs> It's a bit crazy when you get past the here. It sounds a bit seasick. But I find it, for me it's really useful between say 8 o'clock up to around about 11 o'clock I just get... It's got a kind of chewy liquid sound, I really like it. And you've got a volume. That's really useful because I find a lot of pedals like this and phases when you kick them in there's a volume drop and it can be really annoying so having a volume on these can be really helpful. Also um, you've got a, a, a vibrato mode here, let me just put this on, I don't really use that this much because I really bought the unit for the UVAC but just get all that. <laughs> and after 12 o'clock it just get crazy but I'm sure there's be some people who find <laughs> I'll go back to you man. so that's what I was doing just trying to make it sound a little bit more psychedelic but um, check them out they're good fun and I've found that I've used it a lot more than I thought I would so I'm getting my money's worth out of it see you later